G.K. Chesterton. So G.K. Chesterton, known for being very prophetic, though he doesn't like he wasn't actually prophesying, but or prophet, in the sense, prophetizing in the sense where the Babylon Bee has been prophetic, where we've written a story and then later it on it's like, hey, true. that's like or something he says that actually happened. That, but but it's it, a little different in his case. Yeah, he'll like say something well, he did, like he did predict like he'd say one day this might happen and then it yeah, would actually happen. This is so. where he'll say this is where this philosophy is leading. Like he actually did three years before the beginning of World War II. He died before three years before. He warned against Hitler before anybody else was freaking out about him. And then somebody edited the doc and I he, lost it. He was jokes. warning about the outbreak of violence against the Jews. He uh, he predicted the war would come. Uh, that it would begin on the Polish border. Uh, that it would be the most horrible war in history. Uh, he predicted with airplanes that wars would be conducted not just between soldiers but on innocent civilians. And he also predicted that in Russia, that Russia would, uh, he predicted the rise and fall of communism in Russia before it happened. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. None of that's in this list, but that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we got some great we're, quotes. We're talking about prophecies in a more general sense, and here yeah. we go. We're going to run through the top ten Chesterton prophecies fulfilled. <laughs> All right. And yes, we're saying that every time. Fulfilled. All right, number one. We shall soon be in a world in which a man may be howled down for saying that two and two make four, in which people will persecute the heresy of calling a triangle a three-sided figure and hang a man for maddening a mob with the news that grass is green. Feels like we're headed there for sure. Well, we are. I mean, the two and two there make four been, thing was an actual that controversy. That actually has been a thing. It's like racist and colonialist to believe that two and two make four. Did, he had another quote about this where it was like, we will stand with swords in our hands and fight to the death the yeah, idea that two and two is It's part of this four. same, yeah. <laughs> and his point was that, that, that we, we all take for granted what we call reasonable yeah. or rational. Like we all think that, oh, well, that's reasonable. But like today's reasonable things are tomorrow's uprisings and rebellions because we, you know, the things that were reasonable a hundred years ago or whatever, they're not reasonable now. Yeah. And he had this, he so had that's this. why you need to be a person who thinks about what you actually believe. Cause just going off of what culture says is reasonable. Yeah. It means nothing. It's fluctuating constantly. Yeah. He talks a lot about how being conservative or believing in tradition is the most revolutionary thing in many cultures. An eternal and that rebellion. Very true right now. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to declare this one prophecy fulfilled. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, therefore, the modern man in revolt has become practically useless for all purposes of revolt. By rebelling against everything, he's lost his right to rebel against anything. Mm. 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 Yeah, are, we, are we including this long paragraph as part of that? Is oh, that is that part of it? Oh, that is part of it. Okay. Link to larger paragraph. Or maybe it's it might the same. help put it into. Oh, yeah, because this is that. Oh, yeah, this is the real. This is better. Yeah, I got to read this. It's long, but this is really good. This isn't the same as that big... Whatever. Go ahead. Suppose that a great commotion arises in the street about something. Let us say a lamppost, which many influential persons desire to pull down. Have we read this on the podcast? Yeah. But keep going. It's so good, though. A Maybe. gray-clad monk, who was the spirit of the Middle Ages, is approached upon the matter and begins to say in the arid manner of the schoolman, let us first all consider, my brethren, the value of light, if light be in itself good. At this point, he is somewhat excusably knocked down. <laughs> All the people make a rush for the lamppost. The lamppost is down in 10 minutes. And they go about congratulating each other on the, their unmedieval practicality. But as things go on, they do not work out so easily. Some people have pulled the lamppost down because they wanted the electric light. Some because they wanted old iron. Some because they wanted darkness. Because their deeds were evil. Some thought it not enough of a lamppost and some too much. Some acted because they wanted to smash municipal machinery. Some because they wanted to smash something. <laughs> There's war in the night. No man knows whom he strikes. So gradually and inevitably, today, tomorrow, the next day, there comes back the conviction that the monk was right after all, that all depends on what is the philosophy of light. Only what we might have discussed under the gas lamp, we now must discuss in the dark. <sighs> That's good. I, I classified that as prophecy fulfilled because of all the reasons that people had to tear down the yeah. lamppost. Just because they wanted to smash something. Mm -hmm. was, oh, man. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Throwing us all the terror, the statues being torn down. I, I, we're in a culture that loves tearing down right now, but yeah. I, we do get the sense that none of them really know why they're doing it and they all have different reasons. Yeah. Different reasons. There's exactly. definitely a lot of them just like tearing things down. Yeah. It's like some want to replace it with something. Some want to. Yeah. Just it's not like they're all going to get together things. and 
raise a statue that they all agree on. Well, and we got a perfect picture of this with like Chaz. Yeah. Like, we've done it. We did it. What now? You know, and there's like no <laughs> <laughs> Prophecy. Did I hurt your ears? Sorry. Prophecy fulfilled. Because Ethan won't say it. I'll say I for- keep forgetting. Number three. When all are sexless, there will be equality. There will be no women and no men. There will be but a fraternity, free and equal. The only consoling thought is that will en- it will endure but for one generation. <laughs> <laughs> so it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> But, well, I don't We're know, but good. I wonder if we can already see this happening because of yeah. the whole revolu- sexual revolution and all right. that, that already fell apart. Right. But it is like the constant, I don't know. Yeah, just just the undercutting of anything traditional, anything, you know, oh, you're just as straight and normal. You don't, you're not like into like, you know, a bunch of other stuff yeah. sexually. <laughs> what are you, some kind of square? <laughs> <laughs> You like girls? That is like the weird pressure, like it's yeah. coming. I, my kid, you know, my kids at a teenage age, like in schools, it's like this weird pressure to not just be some boring old straight, yeah, straight laced. Oh, I just realized we we read two that that uh those were two separate ones. The the rebelling against everything is lost right to bone against anything oh, okay. was two, I, and that large paragraph was three. That was four. Oh, okay. Oops. So yeah, props of film. Props of film. Is it my turn? I think so. I read the sexless one. Satire has weakened in our epoch, epic epoch, for several reasons, but chiefly, I think, because the world has become too absurd to be satirized. (laughs) You believe he wrote that in 1908? Yeah. He wrote that in 1908. 1908. And we're just like, man, how the heck do we write satire about (laughs) the world in 2020? And Mm -hmm. he was saying that 100 years ago. Prophecy. Fulfilled. Fulfilled. The trouble with modern England is not how many or how few people vote. It is that however many people vote, a small ring of administrators do what they please. Chesterton destroys the deep state (laughs) and releases the Kraken. (laughs) I wonder what Chesterton would say about Trump. That's what I'm really curious. I love to get Dale Alquist. I'd love to get on to talk about that stuff. He knows. Is he like GK Chesterton? He's the president of the uh, president of the society, the American Chesterton Society. Gotcha. Um, Oh, Prophecy yeah. fulfilled. <laughs> Sorry, so I'm hard. not doing it as good as you. And I'm lost. I lost my spot. Oh yeah, number seven. Trouble? Oh no, it is. It is only by believing in God that we can ever criticize the government. Once abolish the God, and the government becomes the God. That's like a quote we take for granted. I mean, it's like a like now it's obvious. It seems pretty obvious, but it probably wasn't obvious when the government was a little more fresh. But uh. Yeah, we've talked about this. I mean, if you don't have angels in heaven and demons in hell, then they're all here on earth. And they're your politicians become your the worst possible beings you can imagine. Yeah. Are human beings. And so you treat them as such. Let's combine this with the next one. The special mark of the modern world is not that it is skeptical, but that it is dogmatic without knowing it. Mm, There you go. Yeah, the I mean it's like they get rid of the oppressive moral judgments of Christianity and then they come up with their own set of moral judgments. They get rid yeah. of end times prophecies and then they come out with dogma. the world will end if we don't do this and this and right. you always have that. You always have dogma one way or the other. Or we, our Abigail Schreier interview is big. I mean, oh that's, man. That's her whole thing's out. religion. The, the, a lot of the trans stuff that there's no science behind it. It's just asserted. Yeah. You just have to, we all have to follow this set of rules. Yeah. Can't be questioned. And it denies the physical reality in favor of this philosophy. And you, this, can't even, you can't talk about it. You yeah. <laughs> Freaky. Prophecy. Fulfilled. Was that better? <laughs> that was way better. <laughs> um, You're on number nine, I think. The dim democracies of the valleys. While a few prigs on platforms are talking about oneness and absorption in the all... The folk that dwell in all the valleys of this ancient earth are renewing the varieties forever. With them, a woman is loved for being unmanly and a man loved for being unwomanly. With them, the church and the home are both beautiful because they are both different. With them, fields are personal and flags are sacred. They are the virtue of existence, for they are not mankind, but men. It's pretty beautiful. It's a thing that like... Anytime people start talking about unity or this weird utopian idea that we're all going to like hang, be, you know, we're going to, we're all going to 
have the same philosophy and we're all going to wear the same outfits and <laughs> drink the same weird grape drink or something. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds horrible. The drink. We don't think about how the good, store, like because so much, there is so much trouble involved in very variety of human being. We forget how much beauty is in it as well. Mm -hmm. I think we would, we would miss it if we lost it. Yeah. I don't remember his wider point in that essay, but yeah, it was something about the, difference between this like sameness that they want to bring on from the top down mm -hmm. and like everybody must believe these things and do these things and these are the beauty of humanity is the differences yeah. and we've lost a lot of that. And that is the continually you know that's the thing like is that that's really the that seems to be what's behind like when they're asserting zillions of genders really they're asserting there is no gen like there's it's right. all whatever you wanted to make it right this whole idea that we're all everything we there is nothing, so he make it. That he makes a great point about that in Orthodoxy about evolution. Just that when you think about what evolution is, if it's not something God started, or if, you know, if, if God uses evolution, then evolution literally is just. It doesn't mean it means there's there's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it means globs of stuff turning to different globs at the be yeah, best. There is no monkey turning. There's no man. monkey. There's no man. There's no yeah. cell. There's no. That's just what plants. you call that current glob of stuff. Yeah. All right. Here's the oh prophecy fulfilled. <laughs> You sound like a, a preacher. Fulfilled. <laughs> All right, here's our final one. And you know, why not in the sub portion, mm. we can do five more. How about that? Sure. Bonus. There, we have some mail, but maybe we can save it for next time and just do the five bonus ones. So if you want to stick around for the subscriber portion, we're going to do five more. But here's the last one. The weakness of all utopias is this, that they take the greatest difficulty of man and assume it to be overcome. And then give an elaborate account of the overcoming of the smaller ones. They first assume that no man will want more than his share. And then are very ingenious in explaining whether his share will be delivered by motor car or balloon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like they will, they're like, oh yeah, sin nature? <laughs> we'll take care of that's easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if we just, yeah, if we just set up the cars and the balloons and everything, right? Then, yeah, that'll be fine. Yeah, people will so just stop. will figure it out. Yeah, that'll be done. But it's like the same people. That's the real issue. It's like the same people who are like, capitalism doesn't work. Everybody's mm -hmm. too selfish. They're going to steal. And they're like, communism will work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like when everybody will just be expected to share. Yeah. <laughs> the same gray bowl of stew. The food. The food the cube. The food. All right. Once and for all. Prophecy, Prophecy fulfilled. Oh, hello there. You must have just watched one of our videos. Thank you for doing that. I'm Ethan, and this is the Babylon Bee, obviously. And uh, click like, just want to remind you, subscribe, hit the little bell, whatever that thing does, comment, we read them all, check out more of our, more of our videos because we make them for people like you.